Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Batasaran Nation, the number one fan side channel for Batasarans. Today, we're excited to talk about Batasaran 35. Once again, the Batasaran team has put in a lot of work and effort to release the latest for Batasaran. We can't thank them enough for the great dedication to Batasaran. As most of you know, one of the main new features for Batasaran is Ligon support. Indeed, with very little configuration effort, you can now use either an aim track light gun, AE light gun, Sidon light gun, or Wiimote. What's more, you can even use a gun con light gun from the PS1 era as well to play any system supporting guns. Therefore, altogether, there are five different types of light guns that you can now use about the setup. Zombies will never be safe again. Now then, let's move on to the new feature for about the setup 35. If you have a NVIDIA card, the good news is the Batocera now has a built-in auto configuration method which will ultimately figure out what kind of card you have. If you have an older card, there's also a fallback method where Batocera can now use legacy drivers as well. And now, let's talk about emulation and the emulators that have been added to Batocera 35. Liberto A5200 has been added which provides emulation for the Atari 5200. In addition, we also have the Berto B SNES added to RPi4 and devices with AmLogic S922X chips. For those of you who don't know, B SNES is a Super Nintendo emulator focused on performance, features, and ease of use. Liberto Dolphin has also been added to 64-bit PC systems and devices with AmLogic S922X chips. In case you're wondering, in my tests, performance is better on the standalone Dolphin emulator. Moving along, there is now support for GamePart GP32 emulation, as well as VTEC Laser 310 emulation, and both of these will work with MAME or MES emulators. In addition, if you own a weaker single board computer and there is now an option for PUAE 2021, which will allow you to have Amiga emulation on the weaker board system. Furthermore, if you own a PAL Kitty A12 or A13, there is now support for swap memory. Uh, I know that when Batocera 34 came out, people were having trouble trying to install Batocera uh, onto these two systems. Now, it should make it much easier. Speaking about handhelds, if you own an RG552, there is now support for Melon DS and Drastic emulators for the system. The Drastic emulators also now support in the RetroPie 2 along with the Audro X U4. And also in RetroPie 2, there is now support for Flycast. Liberto Flycast PPSPP, Liberto PPSPP, and Mupin64. These are all great additions for RetroPie 2. Also, if you have games for Philips Video Pack Plus, it now has its own system folder. So you put games there instead of putting on the Odyssey 2 folder. For those of you who have an Xbox One wireless controller, there's good news because now Batacera has a built in driver using Xbox Neo. And for those of you who don't know, that will allow Batocera to have support for Xbox One S wireless controller, Xbox Elite Series 2 wireless controller, Xbox Series X or S wireless controller, and also support for Edmundo controllers. So it's going to make life a lot easier for those of you who have been struggling with the Xbox One wireless controller. And speaking about controllers, there's now also support for Joy-Cons. And in fact, Joy-Cons can now be paired as one virtual controller. Now, we're going to focus on some ports which have been added or enhanced in Batocera 35. Foremost, GZ Doom has been enhanced and upgraded to support higher resolutions and 3D rendering of the classic Doom Engine games. In fact, let me share with you a 60 seconds clip of how good Doom now looks with upgraded 3D graphics.
For those of you who are Duke Nukem 3D fans, we have not forgotten you. E-Duke 32 has now officially been added to Bonta 35. E-Duke 32 is now supported on 64-bit PC systems and RPi4 systems as well. For those of you who don't know, E-Duke 32 is an active open source project and source port of the Duke Nukem 3D. It was created by past and present employees of 3D Realms. E-Duke 32 offers a convenient way to play Duke Nukem 3D and its expansion packs of modern computers with numerous features and enhancements not found in the original game. You can see here the number of games that support E-Duke 32 including Duke Nukem 3D, Duke Nukem 3D Atomic Edition, Iron Fury, Nam, Napalm, World War II GI, and Shadow Warrior. Speaking about E-Duke 32, Rays is the source port of E-Duke 32 and that has also been added to Bantasera 35. As you can see, Rays combines E-Duke 32, PC Exum, and Blood, and Red Dukem into a single package with various stability and render improvements. According to this list, there are a number of games and ports that support Rays. And by the way, I do plan to check this out and do a future tutorial on it, so stay tuned with Bautista Nation. Another addition to Bautista 35 is Lorex NX Fantasy Console. Inspired by 8 and 16-bit systems, Lorex NX simulates chips for graphics, sound, and I.O. It also supports hardware sprites as well as hardware parallax scrolling with retro effects. The best part is that you can use the basic language to code your own games, something that I used to do during the fabulous 80s. Consequently, you can download Lorex NX and start programming your own 8 and 16-bit retro games and then play them in Batocera. If you're not crazy about programming your own games, you can also go to the main website and download a bunch of free games. In fact, they have pages upon pages of free Lorex NX games that you can play in Batocera. So check them out if you love retro games. Now let's turn our attention to single board computers. With Bata 35, there is now support for Rock 960 developer board. This SBC is based upon the RK3399 chip and it's almost about $100. Furthermore, the Bata team has also begun the work of supporting Orange Pi 3, which uses an all winner H6 system on chip. The team has also begun the work of supporting Orange Pi 4, and unlike the Orange Pi 3, the Orange Pi 4 uses a rock chip RK3399. And finally, let me load up my Batacera system and show you some more features that have been added to Batacera 35. Let's go check it out. Alright, so we're in Batacera, and let's first check out PS3 emulator. Let's go to the select button here. And let's go to advanced system options. And you can see there a number of options have been added to this menu. And this is going to make life so much easier. So much so that I don't think you'll no longer need to use or mess around with the standalone emulator. And because of this, I plan to do a new tutorial on the PS3 emulator. So stay tuned for that. All right, let's go ahead and check out PS1. Something new has also been added here in the options. Let's go back to advanced system options. And let's go into right there, rumble level. That's also been added about the 35. And from there you can now choose the percentage of the rumble level you want on your controller. A pretty neat little feature. All right? Let's go check out Low Rest NX Fantasy Console. And there it is. Again, you can find a number of cool little retro games on the website. And I will be providing a link in my video description. All these games are for free. Check this one out. It's a very addictive little game.
uh, that game I found quite addictive. So, again, check it out if you like these uh, recto-inspired games. All right, let's go ahead and exit this, and then go ahead and press Start on your gamepad. I want to show you something else. Let's go into Updates and Downloads. Let's go to Content Downloader. And it's always a good idea after a new release about to set it to go over here and update install content, okay? And that will load up anything that's new. And then, of course, hit refresh, all right? So let me show you some new bezels that have come recently about the 35. And that is from Mr. Overlay, okay? I already downloaded them, so I'm going to go ahead and check them out. Let's go check it out with Sega Genesis. And let's go with Sonic 1. I'm going to hold down the A or the B button, depending upon your gamepad. Let's go to advanced game options and let's go with uh, decorations. Right now it's set to the bezel project, but let's go ahead and select the new ones. And let's try this with no logos. And then over here, heads up display. Let's go with game info and art. All right. And let's back out and check this out. Looks nice, huh? Alright, so that's a new option for you to try out if you want to. And finally, the last thing I want to show you is that Netplay has been added to XMU. So let's go ahead and check that out. Alright, so there we are, Xbox. And of course, Netplay is only supported for those games that have System Link which includes, for example, Halo 2. So let's go check it out. All right, so from the menu, go ahead and select System Link. And from there, go ahead and select Create New Game. And from there, go ahead and select that. Start Game. It's automatically pre-configured for you. Count down there. And it should load up. And there it goes. Okay, and now I've got Netplay support and Halo 2. All right, that's it. Get out of this. So those are among the many new features of Batista 35. Before we conclude. I want to mention that the BIOS files for Bantasera 35 are already up on the archive.org website. Just type Bantasera 35 BIOS on their search engine and you will find it. So go ahead and download those files since you would need them. I should also point out that if you're new to Bantasera and you want to know how to install Bantasera as well as to find out all the important first steps, then I highly encourage you to watch this video. Indeed, this is the most thorough about to set installation guide that you will find on YouTube. Not only is it thorough for new beginners, but it will also guide you to the next important steps and tips after installation because otherwise you might get lost along the way. In fact, at one point you will even see the mention of about to set 32 in the video. You can just ignore it because everything will be the same and true for about to set 35. I will be providing a link in my video description, so please check it out if you are a newcomer to Batacera. And last but not least, as most of you know, the Batacera team has added support for the Steam Deck. If you've not seen my video yet, I will provide a link in my video description so you can check out Batacera's performance on the Steam Deck. As a matter of fact, developer Nicholas has begun more work on the Steam Deck. Indeed, he's busy squashing all the little bugs that were introduced with the beta version of the software, as well as adding new features. Soon, they will release a final version, which will be merged with Batista Image for 64-bit PC systems. Can't wait. Well, that's a wrap. If you found this video useful, please go ahead and like it. That would really help me out with YouTube's algorithms. If this is your first time watching a video from Batista Nation, I highly encourage you to check out our YouTube channel as well as our website at Nation.com. That will give you a great overview of what Batista is all about and whether this will meet your emulating needs. Finally, I want you to know I've got a lot more videos coming up, so therefore please consider subscribing so you'll stay on top of the latest and greatest of Batista. In fact, coming soon are tutorials on Yuzu. Xenia, XMU, RPCS3, and more. I also plan to do another showcase video on the Steam Deck, 
So stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time about the Senate Nation. Bye.